So welcome to the um, time management and your best performance um, services from ASU tutoring. Um, we are going to talk today about um, a few kind of three main topics. Um, we're going to talk about time management strategies. Uh, we're going to talk about some resources at ASU and some goal setting. And these three things really do go together uh, quite well. Um, and if you have questions at any point, if you want to just put them in the chat or if you want to unmic and ask that, I'm happy to do that. So time management strategies, I mean, really just to, we all kind of know this, but I think it's a good reminder that intentional time management, because sometimes we can think, oh, I know where I have to go at two o'clock. I have to go to work, I have a job, I have a test in two days. And it feels like we're managing our time. But actually, we really need to think about the balance of all that we have happening in our lives. So schoolwork, obviously very important, but also personal lives. Are you active in a club at school or in the community? Are there social activities that are important to you? Family, finances, commuting time, recreation. Um, so building up the uh, timelines that allow you to balance all of those things is really important because all those aspects make you who you are. So um, obviously by managing your time well, you can really become more efficient utilizing even maybe 10 minutes here and there and sometimes larger chunks of time, but being more efficient in terms of maximizing the time available to you in a given day or in a given week. Meeting your goals, which is really important as you are here at ASU, um, obviously working on a degree, but there's other experiences I'm sure that you want to have while you're at Arizona State and managing the stress. We all have some stresses that we have to work on as we're working on our goals. So a big thing to think about is really planning your semester, thinking about it like a big trip. Um, if you were traveling internationally, as some of you might have to come to, to ASU or you're traveling domestically or any place, we always have a roadmap. We think about all the things we need to take and our timelines. And that's a good approach to take when you're thinking about the semester. So first of all, thinking what main organizational tool am I going to use? Um, a paper planner, a digital calendar, other technologies, because we know there are a lot out there like Trello that help you manage your time. But I would pick one that is your central place where you put all the information that you need. And then what's really important at the beginning of the semester, and we're still very early in the semester, so you have time to implement this, is review all of your syllabi and really map out all the due dates in one calendar for all of your classes, because we're going to talk about in a few minutes what it's like to really figure out what it takes to meet a due date. So if I have a paper due and it's due in a month, there's still probably five things I really need to do to finish that paper. And sometimes we forget to make time for those things. So thinking about all the due dates that you have in your syllabi, seeing where you're going to have tough days where maybe you have a day where there's two exams and one paper due. And we're going to talk about a strategy for managing that. Um, and then writing down your goals. Obviously, you're taking courses, you want to succeed, and that is an important goal. But are there other goals? And we're going to talk about that. Personal goals, professional goals that you might want to achieve while you're at ASU. And building that into your calendar is just as important as completing the, the courses that you're taking. And sometimes it takes developing some new habits. Thinking about, okay, you know, maybe I do procrastinate. Or maybe I take too long on projects. So are there some new strategies? And it usually takes, some of the research says, about 21 days to change that habit. Um, so working at it intentionally is a great thing to do. Um, possible calendar items. And some of this you may already do, but sometimes we take this for granted. Obviously, the, the end due date for a project. But then backing that up and thinking, OK, well, my homework is due on this day, but it might take me three days to do it. So let me plan time on each day when I'm going to spend an hour or two hours on that homework set. How and when during the week am I actually going to study and review my notes? Not just before the exam, but maybe every other day after class, because even for 10 minutes, it keeps the information fresh for you and it prevents you from feeling like you have to sit down for four hours to study. If you're doing a research project, are you building in time to actually complete your research and use the library resources and read the information? So if that's happening, sometimes it's important to put that on a calendar. Are you making time to read your chapters for your courses? If you are working, do you have that built in? If you want some recreation time or you have hobbies and family and community obligations and things you like to do, are you building that in? And one calendar 
can allow you to see all of that at once. It might be overwhelming at first, but it will actually help you really make sure that you're achieving everything you want to. And sharing your calendar with other people, your academic advisor, a professor, a peer, a tutor, um, a friend can be really helpful. And, and really thinking about for yourself when you are putting in due dates for this paper is due March 17th, but I'm gonna start doing six different things each week in February, then ask yourself, am I most productive in the morning? So if you say, oh, I'm gonna from eight to 10 a.m., I am going to read all of the research. But if you're not that productive in the morning, you could be setting yourself up to not achieve your goal. So maybe you need to be realistic and say from four to six on February 8th, that's when I'm reading my research. That is time that I'm not going to do anything but do that um, uh, goal. What time of day do you do your best work? What's your optimal work environment? And we know now things are a little bit different with finding places to work, but ASU does have spaces where if you are socially distancing and have a mask, you can still obviously utilize the library. Our tutoring centers are places to study, so you don't just have to stay home unless that is your optimal work environment. Do you like people around you? Do you like music? How much time do you need to get started? Sometimes it takes us 20 minutes to set up our, our desk and then start reading. What distracts you? Can you reward yourself um, when you've completed a task? And if you are facing barriers or obstacles, do you have in mind a support process? People that you can talk to so that you don't feel like, um, I'm disappointed because I didn't do that. You need to talk to someone that can help you maybe re-strategize and also help you feel good about what you have achieved. So if that's an academic advisor, if that's a mentor, um, if that's a professor, if it's a tutor, that is really important that you are not in your academic journey alone here at Arizona State. As you're learning today, there are so many resources available to you. So we hope that you use them. One strategy I really want to talk about because I think it can be effective, but again, if it doesn't work for you, don't use it. If it does, fantastic. It's called reverse calendaring. And so I'm gonna define that. Um, basically, it's a specific strategy to be a little bit more effective in your time management. So instead of just thinking, well, eat the, today on Monday, these are the two things I have to do. And then next week, Monday comes along and we think about what we have to do. It actually encourages you to think for the entire semester or an entire session. Um, and you're usually identifying specific tasks that are needed to complete a, a big project. And I'm gonna show you an example in a moment helps you keep track and it helps you plan in advance when you know, wow, the paper's due, I have to work and I have an exam. And I know that that's coming up, I can really prepare for it. Um, it also helps you build in, which is really important to you, is using the resources we have at ASU, not just reading and writing by yourself or studying for an exam, but looking at tutoring, study group meetings, going to the library, meeting with your faculty on faculty office hours, even through Zoom. Um, and what other, other personal and professional responsibilities you might have. Um, so when you calendar, you in Canvas, which I'm sure many of all of you probably have that now, obviously with our classes in the sync model and online, you've got a calendar feature that you can use if you want to, but of course you can also choose any kind of feature that you want. I'm gonna demonstrate the semester at a glance. This is actually something that we have as a resource downloadable at tutoring.asu.edu. Um, and this is just one piece of paper. It's one sheet in a Microsoft Word document, and it shows you the entire semester. I have just taken a snippet of the first two months, but March and April are also on here. So on one glance, you can see everything that's happening. So for instance, if you were working, you could build in to say you've got work hours on February 2 and 3 and February 8 and 9 and February 15th and February 25th. And then we can see that on um, February 4th, you're gonna email your study group because if we look ahead, there's an exam on February 23rd. And so there's a, several things that we could do to prepare for that starting as early as February 4th. I'm gonna email my study group. On February 10th, I'm gonna organize my notes. On February 11th, we are going to meet as uh, a study group through Zoom. I do have family coming in on Friday the 12th. So I wanna make sure that I can spend time with them. I'm going to take a practice exam on February 16th. I'm going to complete it again on the night on the 15th, excuse me, the 19th. And then I'm going to take my exam on the 23rd. So you can see just in there, there's maybe four or five specific tasks on that calendar that are now visible to make that bigger goal of getting that exam done 
Um, and this way you ha may have a better chance of really processing that material because you're not forcing yourself to study the night before or three days before. You're actually starting three weeks ahead, which is an excellent strategy. Um, the other suggestion, this is a reverse calendar. So this is a little bit different. And again, all these strategies, you really can tailor to who you are and how it fits. Or again, maybe you want to talk to a tutor about your calendar or your advisor or your professor. So for instance, to do this, this would be if I had a writing uh, paper, a writing project due on March 8th um, that I looked at on my syllabus. I'd actually open up a Word document or I do it in my paper calendar and I would mark, okay, March 8th. And then I would work backwards from there, the reverse portion where I would indicate there's a lot of things I need to do to get that final paper written. So for instance, I'm gonna start way back in February, the sooner the better. I'm gonna start by just making sure on February 2nd, I've understood the assignment from the syllabus and then I've brainstormed possible topics. And so that's in the objective goal column. And then there's some notes to make, to look at that on the uh, that notes column. Maybe I'm going to look and do some background reading. I'm gonna look at email listservs for conversations if you are on if you're a graduate student or an undergraduate student in a field there's a lot of email listservs that faculty post on nationally and internationally that you can find out information about topics maybe you're going to look at popular newspapers scholarly resources journals from the library and you need to build time in then on february 9th after i've read some of that material i'm going to try to just draft an outline and it may change, but at least you'll have an outline. And a good tip would be to maybe run that outline by your professor to get their feedback on it. And maybe you make a tutoring appointment to talk about how to further develop that outline. Then on February 15th, you've taken some time to write some, look at some research and you start writing an argument or your thesis statement or your claim. Maybe you go and you meet with a librarian. Then on February 22nd, you've written a first draft. It might be two pages, it might be 10 pages. Anything is valuable in that draft stage. Maybe you'll schedule another appointment with the writing center. Then about a, six days later, you're gonna read your draft. You're gonna start making some revisions. March 3rd, you're gonna make more revisions. And then on March 4th, you're gonna review it one more time, maybe with a friend, maybe with your professor, and then you're gonna turn it in. And so I don't mean to suggest here that it has to be stressful. Sometimes having all these tasks makes that paper seem more stressful, but actually if you break it down and put these things on your calendar, you'll be more successful and you reduce the stress because almost every week you're doing something to achieve that final goal. So hopefully that's a strategy you might find yourself wanting to utilize. So resources, I've kind of talked a little bit as I've been talking about time management. It's really important while you're here at ASU to, to be intentional about developing your personal support network. So for instance, these are folks inside class, outside of class, and the conference is a great way. You are off to a fantastic start um, by getting information about available resources. But the networks can be your professors, and it should be multiple people, not just one person. Maybe some peers in your degree program, and they don't even have to be peers in your degree program. They could be a peer in another degree program, so a friend that you've met at ASU, or friends that you've had before you came to ASU, family members. If you join a student organization or a club, you're gonna meet a lot of people. And all of these people can talk with you about different things. So if you have questions about content you're learning, maybe your professors and the peers in your program are a good place to go to. If you're concerned about your academic skills, maybe you talk to a friend, maybe you talk to your professor. If you're trying to figure out how to work on your time management, again, talking to a tutor. Um, if you're looking for emotional support, your family, your friends, intellectual support as you are developing your expertise in a content area, professors and peers can be great. Just having those conversations is really valuable and you'll feel like you have people that support you and you do have a lot of people that support you here. So the academic support network, I really want to highlight one goal that I think is really important is every semester, take the time to get to know your professors. And so now we know that sometimes you might be in a totally online class. You might be in a sync model where you are on Zoom Live. Maybe you are going to a sync class in person, but there's still so many ways to get to know your professors through real time in person or virtual office hours, sending them an email, asking questions about your content and your assignments. Because as you are building this network, the faculty, when they get to know you more personally, they can be great resources for you when you're applying for jobs or internships and you need them to write you um, a recommendation letter. 
So make sure that you get to know them, that they get to know you, and they can also be a great source of support even after you've finished a class with them. They can remain a mentor for you. Your academic advisor is a wonderful resource as well. Talking to them about courses and schedules, you don't have to wait to meet with your advisor um, right when we come to the time of, of registering for the summer or the spring or the fall semester. You can meet with them and schedule an appointment at any time that they have um, availability. And your peers, thinking about how to create study groups and you can still meet virtually, you don't have to meet in person. Um, if you're into writing and research, if you are a graduate student or you're an undergraduate student and you wanna do undergraduate research, having a group of other peers that you can write with is really valuable. And anyone that you can discuss course concepts with will help you to really reinforce what you are learning through conversation. Um, so I've kind of alluded to this a little bit, but building online communities is important now. We know that we are facing some challenges as we are still trying to um, socially distance and make sure that everyone is healthy and safe. So obviously COVID-19 has, has created an unprecedented new situation for all of us. But ASU is doing a really fantastic job of offering a lot of online resources and support. Many of them are happening in real time, like this conference is a great example. Um, so for instance, professors, ASU counselors, career services, they have office hours through Zoom where you can make appointments with them. There's a lot of digital events, webinars, workshops, review sessions. I put a website here for a lot of student engagement events, um, the eos.asu.edu website that you see there. And also you can create, you can use Zoom yourself to have a study group meeting with peers um, or a group meeting if you're part of a club, um, which is fantastic. So you can maintain those connections that help you with time management and goal setting. In particular, I want to highlight some of the services that my department, UASP, or stands for University Academic Success Programs, offers. You'll see our tutoring.asu.edu website and also our phone number there. Um, we have subject area tutoring. Um, and that includes, it's a small drop-in model and it's live. Um, it's in math, science, physics, business, statistics, and engineering courses. And currently you can get subject area tutoring in person at the Tempe campus only. However, when things change again with public health, we do have tutoring, uh, tutoring sites on all the ASU campuses. But for right now, we have in-person tutoring at the Tempe campus, but we also have it online in Zoom, real time, um, every day except Friday from about 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. during the week and 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Sundays. So there's a lot of availability. Uh, writing tutoring is a little bit different. Instead of drop-in, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. You schedule a 30-minute appointment if you are taking a 100 through 400 level class. And you can discuss any assignment. It could be history. It could be physics. It could be English, it could be theater, it could be psychology at any stage of the process. So if you have an assignment and you just think, you know, I'd like to just brainstorm about this. Um, I don't have a draft ready. Please do make an appointment. Once you have a draft, we can talk about your use of citations, organization, if you have questions about grammar. Um, we also have graduate tutoring um, in writing and in statistics. And those are 60 minute appointments one on one. And those are for students taking 500, 600, and 700 level courses. Um, our writing and graduate writing tutoring is also fully online, um, six days a week. The only day we don't have tutoring is on Saturday. And currently you can also get writing tutoring in person at the Tempe campus. All those details are on our homepage um, at tutoring.asu.edu. The other thing that our team offers is um, a, a pretty vast series of live streamed and recorded sessions. And those could be sessions on uh, course content for let's say a Math 265 course or an astronomy course. It could be a writing workshop on how to use APA citation style. Could be a writing workshop on how to write a literature review if you're a graduate student. Um, we also offer graduate statistics workshops. And again, all that information, if you go to our homepage, you'll see everything you need to know on our homepage, including the tutoring, times and our workshop series. So this might be something that can help you as you are working on time management and your goals this semester. I also really want to highlight the library. They are a really important resource. Um, so if you are doing any research and writing and you have questions about how to find resources like books, articles, government documents, how to cite sources, um, you can go and meet with a librarian. You can do so in person. 
You can also use, they have two fantastic online resources, Ask a Librarian and Connect with a Librarian. That allows you to, to send an email question and get something back to potentially schedule a phone call as well. They are 100% um, accessible and fantastic in helping you be efficient when you're doing research. And I also wanted to mention the Library Guides uh, website. They have a tremendous amount of resources. They have a tutorial on how to cite sources. They are sometimes connected to specific classes. So check out the library, put that into your kind of calendar of resources to look at. Another resource page I wanted to talk about is ASU has so many student organizations. If one doesn't exist and you wanna start one with some colleagues, you can certainly do so. So you see the website there. We also have student government. It's a great way to get active at ASU. And I know, I believe we also do have presenters today from Career and Professional Development Services. So as you're working on your resumes and your cover letters and job interviews, they have a fantastic website and also the ability to meet with them to get information. If you are also thinking about ways to manage your stress, um, you can see counseling services. They have appointments available and a lot of different resources. So I've included their website here. We also have first year success coaches that serve as mentors to help you think about what are your goals? What are the resources you need to connect to? And you can schedule appointments with them. And if you're a graduate student here today, I also wanted to highlight that the Graduate College and the Graduate and Professional Student Association are two really important resources um, available as well. So, so many resources that can, again, help with time management and help you to um, achieve your goals. So one of the resources I have talked a lot about is a study group. And I think it's really important if you um, are in a class, um, there's a lot of research that says the more that you talk out loud, if you're learning about math, science, business, whatever the, the course is, um, we have a better tendency to remember that information. So sometimes having a study group can be really helpful. And again, you don't have to meet in person. You can meet in real time over Zoom. Um, you can use Google Hangouts. You can use Google Docs. Um, so if that's the case, if you are seeing people in class or sending emails to students, or if you have questions, you can contact our tutoring center. Um, you can say maybe one, two, three of you want to form a group, and then you can figure out when do we meet, how do we communicate, and what kind of tasks do we have. You know, maybe one person is responsible for getting everybody's notes and putting them in a Google Doc. Maybe somebody's responsible for making sure they send out the Zoom link for the meeting. So again, something to think about if you'd like to create a study group. And then thinking about all of these time management, all of these resources into, in terms of goals. So you may have heard about SMART goals. It's just an acronym that means when you develop a goal, like I wanna finish this paper, I want to get involved at ASU. Think about ways that you can really be specific, measurable, so you can know if you've met the goal or not. Attainable, meaning is it realistic or have I, have I maybe set the goal too high right now and I need to, to put it into smaller pieces? Is it relevant to what you want to achieve and do you have um, time constraints on it, specific dates? So some examples might be, you know, I want to finish, this is for a class, my assigned chapter readings, <clears throat> excuse me, and complete all my notes by 8 p.m. on Wednesday. That's very specific. I want to schedule group meeting over Zoom for next Tuesday at 5 p.m and propose an agenda to the group, very specific. Um, so those are some things that might help you think about goal setting. Some additional tools that might help when you are managing your projects by yourself, your time, or you're working with the group. Like I mentioned, using Google Drive to share information, um, using online calendars to share, Zoom is fantastic. Trello is a great project management software. And Power Notes is something new that we've learned about. If you have an ASU email address, which you do, you can go to powernotes.com and with your ASU email address, create a free account. And it's a fantastic way. It's kind of like a version of Google Docs that allows you to um, keep track of all of your reading done online and you can actually share it with group members and highlight it. So it's a different way of, of tracking your reading. Um, so then just thinking about goal setting a little bit more, oops, that's the same slide that I had before, but that's okay because there was that other example I forgot to mention. Um, a couple other things about SMART goals. By February 2nd, I want to incorporate my class syllabus into my calendar and create a study plan. That might be your goal after today's session. That would be fantastic. And so give yourself a time to do that. 
uh, maybe you are working on a, a draft of a paper. So I'll complete the draft on February 8th so that I can make an appointment with the writing tutor on February 15th. Um, and again, if you are maybe thinking about wanting to work with faculty on research while you're at ASU, then maybe set yourself a goal to say, I'm gonna send two emails by March 16th to two different faculty to ask if they have opportunities for me to be involved. But to do that, I've got to go online and read about their research um, on, the, on the ASU website. So again, different goals um, and specific timelines to achieve those goals. And so basically, um, the uh, types and purposes of goal setting, we've talked a lot about academic goals, but I also want you to think about personal goals, building that into your calendar. I want to spend time with my family and friends on Saturday. Great. Put that on there. There's a hobby that's important to you. Um, that's something that you should also put on your calendar. Professional, if you're thinking about, you know what, I think I want to submit a conference proposal for a publication, or I want to find an internship. So then that might mean time that you go to career services. And maybe there's things you are doing in your community that you want to make as goals. So think about academic goals, personal goals, professional and community while you're here. So as we wrap up here and, and we'll have a few minutes if you all have any questions, um, something to maybe consider as you go into the weekend or you start Monday is do you have maybe some goals that might be your top two priorities for this semester? So maybe instead of saying I have 16 different goals, which we all tend to do, are there two priorities? Maybe one priority is a certain kind of um, success that you want to have in your courses. And maybe a second one is I want to make sure that I get involved on campus. So if those are your two priorities, think about how you can achieve those goals, put them on your calendar, find the ASU resources that can assist you. Think about what additional information you need to find, going online, talking to people, um, who do you need to contact, what resources do you need? And is there some new habit or activity that you might need to add to your routine so that you can achieve those goals? If you have questions as you're going through the semester, um, please, there's so many people that you can obviously contact at ASU. In particular, in my department, I wanted to list our information again, tutoring.asu.edu. You can look at our website. You can call us uh, at 480-965-9072. And we also have a Slack channel, um, hashtag tutoring slash, uh, hyphen help desk. If you have a question about wanting to get tutoring, or maybe you just say, um, how do I get information about the library? We'll give you the website and get you connected in that way. Um, and we are open Sundays through Fridays, um, and all of our services are in Arizona time. And of course, we're on social media, so we try to keep up with events and things like that. Um, so I want to thank you for coming to this session and I'm going to take a moment to stop sharing and see if you all have any questions um, or about resources, about the strategies I talked about. Or any feedback for me? Was it anything today that was helpful that you learned about? And feel free to, you can take, you can use the chat or you can unmute yourself. Okay, question. What do I do if I'm not able to meet my goal? That's a great question. I think the most important part is to figure out who you can talk to because a lot of the times if we don't meet our goals, we tend to kind of feel disappointed and then we think, I don't know how to change my routine and can I go back and fix this? And you can always make a change. Something always positive can happen. So I would kind of think about that support network I talked about. Maybe if it was a goal and it had to do with studying, maybe you want to reach out to your professor. Or maybe you want to see one of our tutors. A lot of the times, obviously, you can meet with our writing and subject tutors to talk about content. But you can also talk to them about academic skills. Like, I didn't meet this goal. I didn't study the way I wanted to. So how can I re-study? Maybe you say, I wanted to make a new resume and send it out for an internship and it didn't happen, and career services would be a really great resource for you. Um, sometimes just emailing somebody if you're not sure, maybe you email your academic advisor and you just say, you know what, I just wanted to touch base. I had this goal of doing X. I didn't achieve it. Can you tell me what resources at ASU I can reach out to? And then they can connect you um, as well. Does that help answer that question? But I think the biggest the biggest tip I can say is don't um, think about it by yourself. Reach out to somebody, your academic advisor, a tutor, 
a professor, um, and we can help you figure out how to achieve those goals. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions for the chat um, for um, unmuting yourself? We have about two minutes left before the next session begins. Um, is there anything that you've been in classes now for a few weeks that you are thinking you have questions about or resources you might need? Um, actually, in my class, um, I don't know, but I feel like I'm the only I don't know, but I just think I'm the only international student today. And it's hard for me to form a study group in my class. So what would you suggest I do? Because we are just new and I don't know most of them. I know almost, no, I don't know anyone in that class. So what do I do in order to form a study group, a group that I could study with and sure. we can help each other with that? Sure. What do I do? Uh, which do you have a particular class in mind? If not, that's okay. Um, yes, please. I have a class in mind. Okay. Is it a math class, a science class, or like a research class? It's a science class. Okay. Um, so a couple of things that I would suggest, because based on the class, there's some different things that you can do. Sometimes it's really helpful to use our tutoring services because it's small group drop in. And you could be really excelling in the class and understand all the concepts and want to talk about it or having a question about a particular concept. And in our even in our in person and in these zoom settings, we create a sense of community there. And sometimes we have multiple students that come in for the same chemistry or biology or physics or math class. And they sometimes wind up working together and oftentimes they'll ask to go into a breakout room um, and see what is available um, in terms of talking with each other. And honestly, if you're still thinking, well, I don't know that I want to do that and I'm not sure that I know people enough to like email them in my class, I would say just reach out to us at the um, the Slack channel that I mentioned, tutoring slash um, hyphen help desk, or give us a call at the 965-9072 number because we do try to see if we can match students possibly for study groups. Um, and so we can really maybe meet with you individually and find out what class you're in and maybe we know that professor and we might be able to help facilitate it for you. The other thing oh, you could do lucky. That's, is- that's is also talk to your professor and maybe say, I'd really like to start a study group. So are, could I maybe post something on Canvas to the students? Because a lot of times the faculty want you to study together and reinforce. So that's another uh, person that might be able to bring people, because there might be other folks in your class like you that are thinking, I just don't know anybody and I don't want to ask. So maybe there's a way your professor can also facilitate that conversation. Does that help? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Absolutely. Please, um, can I have access or can we have access to your slides? Yes, I know that the conference the presenters, absolutely, they have asked us to um, give them our materials. So that is going to be available um, to everybody that was at the conference. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it.